I hate people who poop on audiobooks for no reason. Can we stop demeaning audiobooks, please? Audiobooks are books. It's literally in the word. They make reading more accessible. Why aren't we encouraging that? So shut up with your moral superiority. Both are proper reading. A book is a book is a book. Man, I love audiobooks. That's actually how I listened to The Disaster Artist for the first time, and it is a fantastic experience. Like, if they weren't so expensive to me right now as a poverty boy, I would 100% be listening to more audiobooks on my drive to and from my girlfriend's house. That would be a fantastic experience. If you are pooping on anyone for enjoying an audiobook, Maybe it's because you're just jealous that you don't got ears. Hello everybody and welcome to Calvis. My name is Lumo and today we are looking at r slash gates open. Come on in. A subreddit dedicated to destroying gatekeeping. And as you know, the act of gatekeeping is the act of keeping people out of things that you like because you're an unfun jerk. This subreddit's dedicated to being a fun jerk who welcomes everyone in. And you know what? Let's get right into it. Behind every great man is a great woman. Behind her, another great man. Everyone here is great, and guess what? It's conga time, babies! Oh, that Latin rhythms? I love Latin rhythms! <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's how it works. Like, man, dude, I have so many people who claim, like, man, I feel like nobody supports me, and I'm always like, I'm right here, and I'm here to listen, it's okay, friend. And then whenever I'm overwhelmed, I say the exact same thing, and someone's behind me, and I'm sitting there like, yeah, you're right, I am supported, and it's pretty good. Remember to support the people in your life, because they're not, no one is an island. No person is an island. Everyone has someone that they've been able to talk to when they needed to talk to somebody. It's important to acknowledge the fact that you need support every now and again. As much as I like to act all tough, like I can do everything myself, I can't. Nobody can. Existence is a collaborative effort, and if you do not collaborate, you only suffer. Me, watching the Avatar The Last Airbender finale with my sister and talking to friends at school about it. Me, watching the next generations of fans love the show as I did 12 years ago. Wholesome Iroh content. The world needs more people like Uncle Iroh. He was too good! He was too good for this world! He was so pure! That man existed not only to support others, but to just let go. Like, I, I he definitely, you know, there's, it's mourning his son is, you know, he's still, except for the fact that his son is dead. But, like, there's just something about Iroh, just his zen acceptance of everything, and his ability to fight for what he believes in, despite his overall calm demeanor. Something about that. I just, I respect it so much. I respect Iroh so much as a character. He, he was so well written. Imagine waking up for an 8 a.m. class, and this is what you walk in and see. He got up extra early to make a holiday class a little fun. Be nice and respect what he's doing. Dude, hell yeah! Hell yeah! I respect fun teachers. Fun teachers are always fantastic. I used to have a uh, professor in college. He, uh, he was a little bit self-conscious about his ears. They were rather sizable. And the thing is, is, someone was sculpting an elf, and they gave him, you know, the big pointy ears, and as he was coming around giving everyone their critiques, he looks this kid dead in the eye and goes, I appreciate that you're trying to sculpt me, but you need to make an original character, and something about it just broke me. The fact that he owned up to the fact that, you know, he got, him got big ears. God, we, used to, we, we had so much fun with that professor, he was such a cool dude. So glad I grew up with this. But damn, this is good too. God, I'm, I'm happy Rage Comics moved on. I mean, they are just here in a new format with Wojak, but... You know, I like the fact that memes have remained pretty constant overall. It's still a black and white, shakily line drawn image in MS Paint, and that is fantastic to me. It's just they're now a bit more uniform and expressive, so you can kind of you can kind of more immediately tell what you're looking at, and I appreciate that. I really do. I like I like meme evolution. It's nice. Metalheads experience metalheads that appreciate more people enjoying into their genre. New metalheads finding a genre that they love. Man, I have had so many people try and gatekeep me out of metal. Because I like new metal. I like stuff like Sonata Arctica. I don't like Screamo. Screamo has always been a little bit weird to me. Like, A7X is kind of like the middle ground for me because they've got some Screamo stuff. And when I was a kid, I remember really liking City of Evil, but not the earlier albums because the earlier albums were Screamo. And I remember I got in trouble. Well, not in trouble, but I got gatekeeped for that because I didn't like the full band's discography. Like, right now, I, I'm, not sure if, I'm not sure if a couple of the bands I'm listening to count as metal, but, like... I've had people try and gatekeep me for enjoying an acoustic version of A Day to Remember as opposed to the actual, whereas I've had other people just like, yeah, man, it's, it's nice, it's a good song, and I'm sitting like, yeah, sharing interests. So remember, share your interests, be nice. Good job on your Japanese game. <laughs> Thanks, good job on your medieval game. Dark Souls by From Software, a Japanese studio, and Shadow of J Japan. <laughs> 
and Ghost of Tsushima from a Western studio. I like that. I appreciate that. I, I enjoy that. I like that we're able to make games about one another's cultures in a way that is good and respectful and taking from one another's mythology. I appreciate that. I always hate the concept of like cultural appropriation when it's like a Western studio makes a an Eastern inspired game. Like, I, I don't know, I find it I find it ridiculous. In my opinion, culture exists to be shared. Every one of us is a product of our culture and what we've learned and what we've experienced. Our folklores, our people, everything makes us who we are. And I find it really nice that people want to share their culture. Like, I have a friend from Puerto Rico who likes to share some of her culture with me, and I like I like to share some of the weird New Hampshireisms with her. It's, it's just one of those things. Like, the cultural exchange isn't appropriation. But, you know... Costumes that are a little bit racist, maybe. Me, says a joke. The popular guy, repeats it out loud. My crush, oh my god, you're so funny. The popular guy, points at me, he said at first. Because that's what heroes do. I appreciate when people will echo a joke and then give you the credit, specifically because they know you were really proud of that joke and they thought it was good, so they wanted to share it. That is some wholesome content. God, dude, I remember I used to have all these thoughts about popular kids when I was in high school and, you know, I, I kept getting bullied a lot. And around the time that, like, it was senior year, we're all about to leave, some dude started hostiling me and one of the, like, huge popular kids just grabs him by the scruff of the neck and goes, Cam has had enough. Stop. And then he checked up on me, made sure I was okay. We never talked after that. But to this day, that has, for some, that changed my perspective on people. Like, I went from being a cynical asshole to, you know what? Maybe I'm the one who has a judgmental problem. Maybe I'm the one who's being judgy. And you know what I was? It was an eye-opening experience. Like, I highly recommend everyone stick up for other people because it might it might change how they view the world. And it's nice. It's a good thing to do. Beach access for all. Beach in Turkey with accessibility features. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, God, I love this. That's amazing. Oh, well, mm. Okay, no, okay, I, I, this is amazing, this is fantastic, but it look, I got some questions, but they have been answered, I think, because it looks like there's a rail at the back to make sure that his, uh, wheelchair and him don't get swept away in the current, which is fantastic, cause, uh, I'm not sure how many of you swim, but it's a lot of arm movement, which he's got the arms, but I have a feeling the leg movement, not so much. So, it's good that there's a little ramp and just something that lets him get his body wet, cause I mean, like, come on, guys, it's the beach, you want, you want to get wet, you don't want to just tan. I like that. That's good. That's fantastic. That's great. I hope his wheels are waterproof. <laughs> Toxic play has got you down. <laughs> Toxic play has got you down. Have some ice cream, King. You play the game your way. Oh my god. Okay, I'm actually going to gatekeep a little bit, but not about Dead by Daylight. I don't know anything about Dead by Daylight, but in uh, Final Fantasy XIV, god, dude, we have we have two things. We have TSS, I'm going to call it Toxic, uh, I'm going to say Toxic Poopa Syndrome, you can kind of fill in what the second S was, and Toxic Elitism. We've got people who will get mad at you for not being in the top 1% of players doing damage, which is not the full scope of your job most of the time. And then you've got players who get mad at you for asking them to play the game. It's so weird to me. In my mind, you should have a baseline competency, and if you can't meet that, that's okay, so long as you can acknowledge it and try and fix it. But I find it very weird to flame people for asking you to, you know, maybe use a damaging ability at some point as a healer or you know maybe attack as a tank or you know getting mad at people for not being in the like top 10 percent of dps when it's like the first week of the raid tier you know what i mean these people have a right to play the game but they don't have a right to give people lip you know what i mean it's very it's very silly G game social status game social structures are weird and interesting to me if you want to be an astronaut, you gotta have the right stuff. I got my Nintendo Switch, some apple slices, and a note from my mom saying it's okay. That's the stuff. Climb on board. <laughs> <laughs> the future that Elon Musk has envisioned. <laughs> Dude, I want to go to space with a Nintendo Switch and some apple slices. I can't get a note from my mom saying that it's okay, though. I'm a rebel. <laughs> God, dude, I'd love to see space. I was embarrassed to listen to the song even in private as I was a kid. Now I'm an adult, you best bet I bumped this crap in my car full volume. I used to do the same thing with my uh, my musical mashups, because I like to listen to mashups on like SoundCloud, uh, and it, I used to be embarrassed, but now I just blast them out of my car in college. I used to just enjoy them with my buddy David. It was fantastic. And by the way, I will say fantastic mashups involve 
Cheramel Dancing, which is a mashup of Undertale and Caramel Dancing. Um, uh, there's one that vanished called You Willed in the Wrong Smith, which is also amazing. There's so many. Uh, if you want to get into mashups, I highly recommend Botanic Sage. It's a good jumping in point. Same with Triple Q. And Neil Segaruga. This is what being a car guy is about. Not only liking a certain kind of car, but looking at the car community as a whole and appreciating that everyone has different tastes. But at the end of the day, we all love cars. Respect everyone's ride and their passions. Well, I do appreciate this. We've got a guy who likes to drive around in old cars. You got people who like to drive around in the new cars. However, I will not respect the guy in a Ferrari that he completely plastered with a Hago faces that I've seen literally everywhere in the New England area. I have seen it in Mass. I have seen it in Maine. In Vermont, I've seen it everywhere. I don't know who owns it, I don't know where it is, but it always has the same license plate, which I will not say for obvious reasons, but there's a guy with an Ahego car, and honestly, man, I just want to talk. Just tell me who you are. I just want to talk. I swear to God, it's only going to be a conversation. I hate when girls post that meme that's like, a lot of y'all only tens in your city. Go to Vegas or LA and you're not that pretty. Like, lady, if someone wants to be the baddest bitch in Idaho, let them be the baddest bitch in Idaho. The potato princess, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude, no, straight up and down, just straight up and down. Like, I never understood this concept of tearing down people for being self-confident. Oh wait, no, I do understand that that's just people's insecurities poking through. I've, I've done it. I'll fully admit I've done it. It's something that I think every human does at least once, because we're all just insecure creatures who want to feel good about ourselves, and not everyone knows how to get there the healthy way the first time, you know what I mean? So remember, don't tear people down. Build yourself up, you know? Maybe, maybe do what I do. I started exercising to not only wake up in the morning, but to feel a little bit better about myself. And when I was exercising, my confidence like skyrocketed. And it, it helped my my depression a little bit, but everyone's different, it might not help you. But like, it's fantastic. Just do something that makes you feel good about yourself, you know? Do something that makes you feel good. Unless it's tearing people down, in which case, don't. Anyone can be tired. You don't need to have kids work 80 hours a week, have just finished your third degree, or have just recovered from a bad illness. You don't have to prove to anyone why you're exhausted and tired. I hope you can get some rest and feel better soon. I genuinely appreciate the fact that my parents don't question when I'm tired. They just, they accept that I'm having a, a rough time of it and they just go, you know what, that's okay. You're still working, that's okay. Because honestly, not everyone's going to be well rested. Like for example, you know, my girlfriend, she's always exhausted and it's not a medical condition. She just, she can't get, a, she can't get a good night's sleep right now due, due to a lot of stuff. And like, I'm, I'm the same way, a lot of stuff going on. I, I can't sleep too well. I know that Zen also has a couple of issues with sleeping. The only person that I know who routinely gets a good night's sleep, regardless of what's going on is aforementioned buddy David. That man literally has nothing that weighs on his conscious. The man, he's just pure joy. It's amazing. But straight up and down, if you're, you know, if you're struggling, it's okay to be a little bit tired and it's okay to sleep in every now and again. You might need it and it might help. Me, when I see a video with a title like, do blank zoomies count? Zoomies are zoomies. That's correct. That's accurate. <laughs> I've got two bunnies that I, I see on the regular and they're very pure. And every time that I like lay down with them in their enclosure, they immediately start zooming and it's so cute. And they like to like sprawling over my body and like sit on my chest. They're so pure and I love them. Zoomies are zoomies. Always respect the zoomies. People will criticize your dreams. You can't marry the moon. Being sad is not a real... <laughs> being sad is not a real job. Stop summoning the devil. Ignore them. Be real. Be yourself. Start a cult. <laughs> Before I met my girlfriend, I was actually like full on set to make a harem because like, who's going to stop me? Like, realistically, what harm does this do to have a five way, you know, you know, stable and respecting polygonal relationship? Polygonal. Polyamorous relationship. I'm dating a cube. <laughs> <laughs> Can you leave that in? <laughs> Can you leave that in? Hey baby, you got some nice angles on ya. <laughs> that shit a cuter obtuse. <laughs> I see nothing wrong with having like a stable five-way, you know, polyamorous relationship if everyone on board is consenting and agreeing to it. Like, do what makes you happy so long as you're not tearing down other people. That's all I'm gonna say. Don't gatekeep. Be happy. But if you can't fully be happy, be accepted. When I was serving at a Mexican restaurant, as a Mexican, I always enjoyed when people tried to speak Spanish. I think it's really cool to see people enjoy the Spanish language. I'd give them a few tips and praise them for their efforts. Dude, again, my, my friend from Puerto Rico, she, she's so nice whenever I try and speak Spanish to her and try and understand Spanish. Cause I took a lot of Spanish, but none of it stuck. So I have a vague understanding of things being said. So every now and again, I try and like speak Spanish with her and she'll correct my pronunciation and I'll correct some of her English pronunciation. But like, again, 
The healthy exchange of cultures is important. Learning more about the world will only increase your view of it. How to tell if you're a real Elder Scrolls fan? Quiz! My ache, seal of approval. Do you play any of the Elder Scrolls games? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you are a true Elder Scrolls fan. I never understood the concept of being a true fan. Back when I did YouTube, I had this issue all the time where I had people like, Oh, I'm a true Lumo fan. I've been here since the start, and I can always say, No, you haven't. Because I can tell when they subscribe, and I like to call them on it. There's no such thing as a true fan. If you're a fan, you're a fan. If you like the content, you're a fan. That's all there is to it. If you like these videos, you are a fan of Kelpus, but there are no true fans. Because at the end of the day, everyone likes the thing. And that's pretty great in my book. Everyone likes the thing. Oh, you don't have everything memorized in Mistborn? <laughs> no true fan? No, I'm a fan. I like the books. I think the metallurgy system is cool. Remember, like what you like, and don't let anyone tell you you can't like it. And that's all the time we have here today on Calibus. This was a wonderful way for me to start my week. If you liked this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. We have hit a huge milestone recently, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate all the support you guys have been showing us. It makes a world of difference to us. It really does. If you want to see more Calibus, there's going to be another video popping up on your screen in just a couple of seconds. As always, my name has been Lumo, and I hope to see you in the very next Calibus video. Have a lovely day.